Welcome to lecture 3, course CSP Intro to App Design. Our lesson today can be accessed through code.org. So you have to go to code.org, create an account for yourself, join my class, and start. So as I told you before, when we are going to use lesson 1 introduction to app, join my class through the section code that I will give you in class. Let's hold on for a minute and ask, what are apps? How do we interact with them? What kind of things do apps do? I believe all of you are using apps on your phone, tablets, or computer. So do you know the answer? So our first app that we are going to talk about is Water Conservation Tips. So after opening the app, we have to answer these questions. What does the app do? Who is the target audience? How does it benefit them? What are some ways it might be improved? My name is Meili Ku, and I'm a designer and an inventor. And so some of the things I've designed have been at Apple, and now I design products for kids to use so that they can have an easier time in school. My other jobs include DJing and dancing. Computers are everywhere. They're in people's pockets. They're in people's cars. People have them on their wrists. They might be in your backpack right now. But what makes a computer a computer? What does make a computer a computer anyway? And how does it even work? Hi, I'm Nat. I was one of the original designers of the Xbox. I've been working with computers since I was maybe seven years old. Uh, and now I work on virtual reality. As humans, we've always built tools to help us solve problems. Tools like a wheelbarrow, a hammer, or a printing press, or a tractor trailer. All of these inventions helped us with manual work. Over time, people began to wonder if a machine could be designed and built to help us with the thinking work we do, like solving equations or tracking the stars in the sky. Rather than moving or manipulating physical things like dirt and stone, these machines would need to be designed to manipulate information. As the pioneers of computer science explored how to design a thinking machine, they realized that it had to perform four different tasks. It would need to take input, store information, process it, and then output the results. Now this might sound simple, but these four things are common to all computers. And that's what makes a computer a computer. The earliest computers were made out of wood and metal with mechanical levers and gears. By the 20th century though, computers started using electrical components. These early computers were really large and really slow. A computer the size of a room might take hours just to do a basic math problem. These machines are things of gleaming, very colored metal and numerous flashing lights. Computers started out as basic calculators, which was already really awesome at the time, and they were only manipulating numbers back then. But now we can use them to talk to each other, we can use them to play games, control robots, and do any crazy thing that you could probably imagine. Modern computers look nothing like those clunky old machines, but they still do these same four things. First, we're gonna talk about input. This is my favorite, because what input is, is the stuff that the world does, or that you do, that makes the computer do stuff. You can tell a computer what to do with a keyboard, you can tell them what to do with a mouse, the microphone, the camera, and now if you're wearing a computer on your wrist, it might listen to your heartbeat, or in your car, it might be listening to what the car is doing, and a touch screen can actually sense your finger, and it takes that as input on what it's doing. All these different inputs give a computer information which is then stored in memory. A computer's processor takes information from memory, it manipulates it or changes it using an algorithm, which is just a series of commands, and then it sends the processed information back to be stored in memory again. 
This continues until the processed information is ready to be output. How a computer outputs information depends on what the computer is designed to do. A computer display can show text, photos, videos, or interactive games, even virtual reality. The output of a computer may even include signals to control a robot. And when computers connect over the internet, the output from one computer becomes the input to another, and vice versa. The computers we use today look really different from the earliest thinking machines. And who knows what the computers of tomorrow will be like. My hope is that you get to help decide what you want the computers of tomorrow to look like. But across all computers, regardless of the different types of technology they use, they're always doing the same four things. They take in information, they store it as data, they process it, and then they output the results. When we reach level 9, we have to do this. With a partner, take another look at the sample app you explored before by navigating to the app investigation starting at level 9. Consider what the input and outputs are for the app. What are they? We are going to talk about them later on. And write whatever you see on your paper. So in the app, we have three things to be considered. A user interface, the thing that you see in front of you the inputs and outputs that allow a user to interact with the piece of software. User interfaces, can, user interfaces can include a variety of forms such as buttons, menus, images, text, and graphics. What are inputs? Inputs, data that are sent to a computer for processing by a program, can come in a variety of forms such as tactile, interaction, audio, visuals, or texts. What about outputs? Any data that are sent from a program to a device can come in a variety of forms such as tactile interaction, audio, visual, or text. For example, if I have a WhatsApp, when I type hi to someone, this is an input because I'm putting the hi, which is hi. For the other user, it's an output because he's just seeing hi. Uh, when he is sending hi back to you, for him, it's an input. For you, it's an output.